Okay, I get it. Breathing through your nose is uncomfortable, okay? But mouth breathing is incredibly inefficient and suboptimal. As a practitioner and a coach, if you came in to see me or were interacting in some way, I'm gonna be watching how you're breathing because it can tell me a lot about the state of your overall health and then some potential um, indicators of your performance. So if you wanna take my word for it, okay, and carry on with your day, just with your mouth closed, know that you gotta breathe through your nose, you just wanna trust me, then save yourself a couple of minutes here and just carry on. Um, but if you wanna learn, I want you to keep watching and consider taking my upcoming a cardio for curling course program that I'm gonna be putting together because it's gonna be a nice educative, um, educative, it's gonna be a nice education opportunity so that you can learn more about how to breathe efficiently for curling, how to train specifically for curling, um, and then of course be able to rebound between shots and have that energy for an entire tournament. So let's think about this. Why do we breathe? Okay, to inhale oxygen to be used by our working tissues and exhale carbon dioxide and other waste products that were produced from movement. Okay, pretty simple. But how does that chemical exchange actually happen? And, in, and more importantly, can we influence its efficiency? So I'm gonna warn you, this is gonna get a little nerdy, right? But no more than like high school bio, I promise. So let's take a step back here. I want you to do something for me. I want you to just take a deep breath for me. Okay, think, okay, I need to calm my breath and my mental state down after a hard sweep so that I can do something like talk to my teammate, uh, sweep another shot, or most importantly, throw my next shot. Okay, so I want you to take that deep breath right now, whatever you think that would look like for you. Okay, so most people do this. They go, and it's all in the chest and you're aiming for volume and maybe even you forcibly exhale that air. Okay, so how chest breathing affects your overall focus and efficient performance is time for another post or DM me if you're like, I want to get into the nitty of the gritty for this now. Like I want to know now, I want to know when now, I want to know now. But at the end of it, you aim for a bigger volume of air. So most people think deep breath means bigger volume of air. How many times have you thought bigger, deeper breath meant big breath? Hmm? Most people think more air equals more oxygen, okay? More oxygen to my muscles, I can get more out of it, I can get rid of lactic acid, yada, yada, yada. But no, more air does not mean a guaranteed more oxygen to the working tissues, okay? So bear with me and let's talk about what's happening at the lungs, the alveoli, and the blood vessels, the capillaries. I've got a little diagram here for us today, okay? So we've got the lungs, and the blood vessels, okay? So we breathe in oxygen, and when we breathe out, we hope to breathe out carbon dioxide, okay? Now, what isn't talked about is how this happens. How does the, how does the carbon dioxide get into the lungs to be breathed out, and how does the oxygen get into the bloodstream to be used with the working tissues? So what actually needs to happen is an exchange. There's a chemical exchange happening here. The oxygen exchanges for CO2. Now what has to happen that isn't talked about is that there needs to be a buildup of CO2 in the bloodstream. Okay, just because I take in a bigger volume of air doesn't automatically mean that oxygen is gonna transfer. We need a buildup of carbon dioxide in the blood in order for this exchange to happen. So if we have more oxygen on this side, maybe from a large volume of air that we just took, that deep breath that we took, we only offload part of the CO2 from the blood. Okay, so only some of the CO2 comes over. So a big volume of air means actually less oxygen and carbon dioxide to do this exchange. And when we regulate our breathing and we learn how to regulate our breathing and ensure that we are taking in only as much air as we need, we are able to offload more CO2 and absorb more oxygen, okay? So you might feel at some point, you might be thinking, well, sometimes I feel like I need a big volume of air. I, I need more oxygen in my body. I feel like it. Um, and what is happening is that we're feeling compelled to take this large volume of air, but if we consistently overbreathe, so taking in too much air, either from breathing too often or taking too big of breaths, your body actually becomes sensitive to the amount of CO2 in your body. Okay, so that it, the, the, the amount of CO2 that builds up, our body decides it needs to do that offloading quicker. Okay, so someone who has a more efficient breather is actually gonna be able to do more work 
with less oxygen, which means that they can have a bigger buildup of CO2. And that comes from training. So we do this during training, but I wanna talk about why nasal breathing helps this, this chemical exchange happen more efficiently. Okay, so, so what I'm talking about when, when um, we become too sensitive to a buildup of carbon dioxide, what this triggers is a response earlier than what we actually need. Okay, so our body is, has been conditioned to think, okay, I need more oxygen, which is good because you would die if you didn't get more oxygen. And we think more air means more oxygen. Okay, so this is a subconscious piece and also conscious. It's a learned behavior that our body is, has gotten its stuff into and it's actually a negative loop because we're not getting the right amount of oxygen, so we keep thinking we need more air. And that's why overbreathing can be so damaging because it's actually really hard to stop. And that's what I'm gonna get into in the course is how to learn how to breathe through your nose at rest and of course, train efficiently. So I want you to think then about how big of an entrance your mouth provides versus your nose for the air to enter and leave. Okay, so the passage for your nose and your mouth are different sizes. So when I breathe through my mouth, I'm actually able to take a bigger volume in and we just talked about how we don't want more air because that doesn't mean more oxygen. So if we're able to control the breathing through the volume of air we're taking in likely from our nose, okay, smaller air passage means less oxygen, sorry, air coming in, therefore less oxygen exchanging, it's more efficient. So if we have a smaller space that limits the volume of air, we have a whack load of important things happening when we breathe through our nose. Okay, number one, which we've talked about, is the nose limits the amount of carbon dioxide that is flowing out and allowing us to absorb more oxygen, okay? So we're not only controlling how much air comes in, we're actually contro controlling how much air comes out. And the nose filters, it humidifies, and it launches an immune response to uh, any air that passes through it. So it helps to protect us from bacteria and pathogens in the air. Think, you know, COVID, this is not a guarantee, but it is a part of our immune response that when we breathe through our nose, we're able to regulate what kind of pathogens are getting into our lungs and into our systems and into our immune systems. Not to mention all that, more oxygen is then delivered to the working muscles, which means that we're more efficient with our energy production. And this also reduces lactic acid. So you can think of a whack load of things that are gonna actually help you out here. So let's circle back. You're gonna be thinking now, Steph, my therapist, my yoga teacher, my mom, they, she told me to take a deep breath when I wanted to calm my mind or my body. Um, oh, or recover from movement, okay? But that has gotten lost in translation. Is that, it, what has got lost is that a deep breath isn't about volume. It's about the depth of the breath that goes into the lungs, making our belly move. So that diaphragmatic breathing that everybody's talking about, a deep breath, for recovery and for relaxation isn't a large volume of air it's a deep breath into the belly okay and in and so if the response to this video is really good i'm actually going to do a, a part two and we'll talk about belly breath and chest breath and how to be most efficient with managing our, our nervous system as well as our cardiovascular system yada 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 um so if you struggle with breathing your nose and your diaphragm and a deep breath know that likely means your breathing muscles aren't working properly okay you might experience moments of anxiety back pain neck pain and issues not only related to breathing it but also moving efficiently we don't want that as athletes and as humans so my upcoming 12-week course titled cardio for curling is going to not only teach you how to breathe through your nose at rest but how to use these breathing techniques to recover between shots. Everybody wants that, recover between shots faster, less mental space on our breath and our fatigue and more on the game. Okay, so recovering between shots, um, as well as getting the most out of your training and keeping your energy and focus throughout a whole tournament. These things are very important to curlers wherever the heck you live. Okay, so simply knowing how to breathe through your nose and train efficiently your cardio is gonna help you do all those pieces and that's what I wanna help you do. So shoot me a DM if you're like, oh my God, nobody ever talks about training your breath for curling and I want to learn more. And then if you liked this post and you want more, I need to see engagement. I appreciate you sharing this with your teammates, sharing it on your pages, sharing it with your parents. Okay, soak all this knowledge in, send me a message if you have any questions and, and yeah, Stay tuned, Cardio for Curling, we're coming in hot.